Hello everybody, Joey Wagner with you folks. Uh, I, I know that it's, that it's uh, been a long, long time since I've done a message on here, everybody, but there was just a message that the Lord put on my heart that I just wanted to share with all, all of you. And, and folks, for you, for me, these last few months with the pandemic and everything else that's been going on, uh, it's been, it's been rough with all of the changes and everything that's been going on in the world. It's been very, very rough. And the Lord put this message of encouragement on my heart to share with all, all of you. And everybody, it's all about slaying the dragon. And to show that, I want to go into the Old Testament, into 1 Samuel chapter 17, about one of the most amazing unbelievable slaying the dragon stories that is in scripture and that's the story of David and Goliath I'll start at the very beginning so at this time there's a war going on between the Philistines and the Israelites and at the time the leader of the Israelite army the king is King Saul and at the time, David, who would, be, who would later be king, three of his brothers are soldiers and they're a part of the war. So David is at home. He's the shepherd tending to the sheep, tending to all of the animals, like he's done his whole life. And he is told by his father... To go to the soldiers, go to where the war's going on, take food and give food to all of the soldiers. So David does as his father tells him to do, and he goes and he does that. And, and while David is there, he finds out what's been going on the entire time. And what has been going on is that there's a very fearful Israelite army. Because one of, the Philist, one of the Philistine soldiers, his name is Goliath, and uh, he has uh, shaken fear into the army. As he was a champion fighter from where he was from, which is Gath, he was 9 feet 4 inches tall. The armor that was on him was all over his body, complete bronze. The armor on his chest, it says in the scriptures, was 125 pounds, more than me. So he's big, tall, strong, and for 40 days straight, he was putting fear into the Israelite army, calling them on, and cursing their God, Jesus. So David gets there, he sees all of this is going on, and David's only there to help, give him food, make sure that his family's okay. And when he gets to the camp, for, for just being there, he was mocked. He was mocked. And eventually in the scriptures it says that King Saul ordered David to him. Because King Saul wanted to talk to David. And this is what it says in 1 Samuel 17.32. These are the words that David said to Saul during their conversation. He said, don't let anyone be discouraged. I, your servant, will go and fight this Philistine. So think of it. The army, they don't want to fight him. They're scared. Young, small, tiny David going to fight this 9 feet 4 inch tall Philistine. It doesn't make sense, does it? But I'll continue on. Saul replied back, You can't go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a boy. Goliath has been a warrior since he was a young man. So David gave his point of view. He explains to King Saul that for his whole life he's been a, a shepherd and he protects the animals from getting eaten by bears and other bigger, more dangerous 
animals. In verse 37, David says, The Lord saved me from a lion and a bear, and he will also save me from this Philistine. You see that confidence? That strong faith by David? Doesn't play around. He comes right out with that faith, very aggressive with it. Proclaims it. So then Saul says to David, Go and fight him, and may the Lord be with you. And before David went to fight Goliath, Saul offered David weapons, armors, but David declines it, as he's not a big guy, the armor is very, very heavy, and he's not comfortable wearing it, and he can't walk a round in it. So the scriptures say that David walks towards, Go walks towards the giant, Goliath, and in verse 43, Goliath says, do you think that I am a dog that you come at me with with sticks? Because he couldn't believe that small, young, a boy, David, was going to fight him. And as a result, he used God's names to curse David. Goliath told David, Come here, I'll feed your body to the birds of the air and to the wild animals. Because Goliath, with his bare hands, could just snap David in half. He's nine feet four inches tall. But David wasn't scared. He stood there strong in faith, knowing that the Lord was going to be on his side. And he said, You come to me using a sword, a large spear, and a small spear. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. He's the God of the armies of Israel, and you have spoken out against him. David continued, Today the Lord will give you to me, and everyone gathered here will know the Lord does not need swords or spears to save people. This battle but belongs to him, and he will help us defeat all of you. Just think of that battle, everyone. A boy against a giant. You could try to think of it any way you could, and if you would think of ways to win every time, the giant would win. But there's the equalizer here, the major equalizer, the major encouraging equalizer, and that's the Lord. With the Lord on your side, nothing is, a, is against you. In verse 48, as Goliath came near to attack him, David ran quickly and aggressively. David wasn't passive, he was aggressive. He ran quickly to meet him. He took a stone from his pouch. He put it into his, his sling and slung it. And the stone hit Goliath, the Philistine, on his forehead, and it sank into his forehead. Goliath fell face down on the ground, and David defeated the Philistine with only a sling and a stone. An encouraging show of the Lord's power and the Lord's love and the Lord's favor. And with the Lord's help, David slayed the dragon. And the Lord isn't here just for David. And he's not here just for me. And he's not here just for... He's here for all of us. With the Lord's help, any problem can be fixed. Any disease can be cured. Any addictions can be stopped. Any heartbreak can be healed. With the Lord's help, any dragon can be slayed. And everybody, as I was sort of going through this message, uh, it made me think of my life. And, and sometimes it feels like my whole life is a David versus Goliath battle, whether it's the Lord getting me through college. When I was in, when, when I was in college, there were there were some issues that I had with my financial aid that I was supposed to get 
but they didn't want to give to me, even though I was supposed to get it. And the only way that I was able to get it and get through school was because the Lord was on my side and He took care of it. Getting my driver's license, I had to take the test three times. Only possible through Him. Me just being here, being born when I was young, uh, I was, not many people know this, uh, but if, but everybody, when I was born, I was born three months premature and I was two pounds. Uh, my parents would always say that uh, when I was born, there was only a handful of children that survived that. Being that light and being that preemie. And because of the Lord's hand and His favor and Him slaying the dragon, I'm one of those people. And I thank Him for it. And I will say this, the Lord is there all the time, and He'll slay any dragon. Just, you, you just got to have the faith, you got to have the effort, you just have to keep on pushing. Keep on pushing, keep on doing your best, and He'll take care of the rest. And I'll say this, because with the Lord on your side, it will get taken care of. But it doesn't mean it's going to be easy where you just sit back and do nothing. That's not the case. If you think it's going to be easy, it's not. If you think it's going to be not stressful, that's not true either. All of these obstacles in our, in our life, they're called obstacles for a reason. Because they're not easy. They're hard. They're stressful. They can be maddening. They can be frustrating. They can be scary. But the thing is, you can't give up, you can't stop, you got to keep fighting, you got to keep moving towards that finish line. And the Lord will propel you past that finish line. It's sort of like if you're running a marathon. And at the very end, you tried your best, you tried your hardest, your, your legs gave out five steps before the finish line. The, the Lord's there to pick you up and take you over that finish line. And that's what David did. That's what David did. He went to try to help the soldiers give him food. They weren't just happy to get the food. They mocked him while he was there. Like, what are you doing here? They mocked him. Did that stop David? No, he kept pushing on. Saul tried to, King Saul tried to talk him out of fighting Goliath. That didn't stop him. He kept pushing on. Goliath. A giant didn't stop David. Because David knew that the Lord was there with him. And he had complete faith that the Lord would take care of it. And he did. And I'll finish on this note, everybody. Uh, there's a, uh, there's a uh, Christian song and... Uh, and uh, one of the lyrics in it is, You've brought me this far, so why would I, why would I question you now? Just think a a about that for a second. Wherever you are right now, wherever you are right now, whatever situation you're in, you're there for a reason. The Lord put you there for a reason. You might not know why you're there, or you might not want to be there at this moment, but the Lord has you there for a reason. You're in the palm of His hand. The issues are in the palm of His hand. And He's going to slay those dragons, whatever they are. If it's lung cancer, like my aunt just got di diagnosed with, the Lord's going to take care of that. Whether it's broken wrist, like my grandma has right now, He's going to take care of that. He's going to slay that dragon. He's going to take care of it. Uh, the issues I'm going through right now, uh, really can't find any work right now with the pandemic. I know the Lord's going to take care of me and He's going to get me through this. And any illnesses, He's going to, He's right there. He's slaying that dragon right now as we speak. 
It's in his hand. He's going to take care of it. And I pray, don't give up. Don't give up on the situation. Don't give up on the Lord. He'll slay that dragon for you. He has for me, and I know he'll do the same for you too. And everybody, Lord Jesus, in your name I pray. Lord, I want to thank you for this, for this message, Lord. Lord, I pray that whoever needs to hear it is watching this video right now and they listen to it. And Lord, I just pray that you give all of, the, all of us the strength, the knowledge, the ability, the perseverance, and the encouragement to keep going through whatever issues we're going through, Lord, right now. Lord, I pray that your hand is over all of us and that, and that those problems, those obstacles, that brick wall, it gets broken down immediately, breaking right through it, slaying that dragon, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that you have your healing hand over my aunt, Lord, with her lung cancer, Lord, I just pray that you heal that again. You've healed it once before for her. It's back now, and she needs you to heal it a, 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 again. And Lord, I just pray you have your healing hand over my um, grandma with her wrist. And that they continue to heal, and she continues to get stronger, Lord. And I just pray for that for all of us. In your name I pray, amen. And if there's anyone out there who doesn't know Jesus as their Savior, uh, or if you're interested in being saved and you're quite not sure, these are the steps. Number one, it's just a conversation with, 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 with the Lord. You're just talking to God. You're just talking to Him. You can be anywhere, anytime. Just in... And when you say this, you have to mean it in your heart. You just can't say it just to say it. There has to be meaning behind it. You have to mean it. Uh, but explain to the Lord that you're sorry for all of the all of the sins and the and the wrong things that you've done, and that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that He came down, He died on the cross for you, to save you because He loved you so much and that he completed the process by raising up from the dead. If you do that, you're saved. You're one of the Lord's beloved children, and there's a spot in heaven waiting for you. Everybody, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you have a, a, uh, a blessed day, and I hope that you keep battling. You don't give up because the Lord's going to slay whatever dragon is in your way right now. Have a great afternoon. Joey Wagner signing off.